Okay, so I've been wanting to talk about this technique for a while now, and I finally got the perfect chance to do so because the official translations for Fisto Nordstar from Viz Media have finally reached past the Salder fight. So, in Powers coming for Fisto Nordstar, there's been a bit of a discussion regarding what the heck Salder's ultimate technique actually is. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Fisto Nordstar, uh, Salder is the practitioner of Nanto Hohoken, or the Phoenix Fist of the South Star, uh, his actual name is Thouser, and he fights Kenshiro at one point in the story. During the fight, Salder will proceed to jump up into the air as such, and he will jump into Kenshiro's punches, and he will appear to phase through Kenshiro. Um, in the manga, it's a little harder to tell, but I believe earlier panels of the fight make it a little more blatant. Uh, just know that this is the, this is the picture I picked up just for, you know, for reference for the points I'm going to make later on. Just understand that even in both the anime, movie, and, uh, physical media here, it appears as though he is phasing through Kenshiro. So, as such... Uh, many people have taken a stance similar to VSB, where this technique, the ultimate technique Salder possesses, is intangibility and levitation. Now, that seems fine on paper, and a lot of people, mo for most people will be like, that's fine, we've accepted that, we can move on. However, when I was reading the official translations done by the E1 book, uh, that is not the E1 book right here. Yeah, okay. We have this line right here that kind of caught my attention. Most impressive Salder, you have managed to predict Ken's movements. However, this battle is good as one. So, I want to point out that Salder at no point prior to this demonstrates any form of intangibility or anything. He's just fast. None of the actual material that talks about his technique ever references it being intangibility. However, I didn't really pay attention to that. I was fine calling it intangibility because it seemed solid until I saw this translation. And once again with the official translation done by uh, Viz Media over here, we have Salder can see the flow of Ken's movements. So obviously if this technique's intangibility, it doesn't really make sense for that to be relevant. Rao is a credible source of information. He not only fought Salder, what the hell is that? But he also is a master martial artist in his own right and is a successor of, the, of Hokuto Shinken. So he's a credible source talking about this technique. He, he should be able to tell. He can read people's attacks just like Kenshiro. Should be fine. However, so that caught my attention. But unfortunately, in the E1 book translation, there's not really too much else to work with. Because after Salder does get hit by an attack in this form by a Toki Blast from Kenshiro, uh, as, you, as referenced here, Kenshiro still hasn't moved from his stance. The very next panel is he jumps at Kenshiro and Kenshiro blasts him. I didn't feel that was relevant to get. However... For the purposes of intangibility, but I'll come back and talk about that momentarily. However, Souther, after he gets hit, does not say anything. He just says, you will you will never deliver a lethal blow against my Nanto Hoken. You cannot target China point that will defeat me. Nothing really worth talking about here. Not a lot of details. I want to point out this technique does not is not well explained at any point from any of the media I've seen. Uh, I haven't seen any guidebooks explain it, and the mobile game doesn't really explain it at all. However, in the Viz Media translation, we get Souther stating something incredibly interesting. I think this is the first time we actually get a more direct confirmation here. Nantahokin makes me light as a feather, and you cannot deliver a fatal blow against the feather. You're, you cannot strike the Hiko that will bring me down. Hiko's just pressure points. I don't know why they try to spice it up. So, Salder is confirming here in the official English translation that his technique is not intangibility, it makes him light as a feather, and that's it. And that's actually supported by Salder's statements during the fight. In the, in the Viz Media translation, Salder states, I am a feather fluttering in the sky, not even the greatest master can defeat me. And in the one book translation, he states, I am a winged warrior, not even the greatest master can defeat me. Combining this with Rao's statements, that Salder is predicting Ken's movements and dodging them accordingly because there's no point in predicting if you're intangible. There is no reason to assume this technique is intangibility, especially when you consider the fact that Viz Media states it's light as a feather and Salder's statements throughout the fight would also support the idea of it being light as a feather. 
The other issue I have with it being intangible is the technique Kenshiro uses to defeat Salder is evidence for him having intangibility interaction and the like. Um, but the problem is that he just fires Toki out of his fingers. As far as I know, there's no other special property besides it being invisible. Because every time it's fired, we never really see the attack get blasted off. It's just kind of invisible every time we've seen it. Um, at least in the Fist of the Blue Sky and the Fist of the North Star manga. I believe it appears in a pachinko machine. But I believe even the pachinko machine has it being invisible. So... The issue with that is it's just a standard Toki Blast, and Kenshiro's punches are all laced with Toki, especially when he's at 100%, which by the time Kenshiro shows up for this fight, he would be at 100% with his attacks. Because he is trying to kill Souther, he is bloodlusted, and he has gone to 100% earlier in the fight. So, to clarify, um, I've, I'm saying that Souther's technique is not intangibility or even levitation at this point. Levitation might be viable, but it's not intangibility because according to the Viz Media, an official English translation, it just makes him as light as a feather. Uh, there's no contradiction to this and this would also be supported by statements from both the E1 Books translation by both Rao and Salder and the Viz Media versions of the translations. So what is Salder's ultimate technique if it's not intangibility? Well, given the fact that he says it makes him as light as a feather, it's some form of weight manipulation. A body's relative mass or the quantity of matter contained by it giving rise to a downward force, the heaviness of a person or thing. So Salder's manipulating weight in some way, shape, or form. Either this is mass manipulation, matter manipulation on his himself, or something akin to that. I, I'm just going to call it weight manipulation, but matter manipulation is fair game. I don't think density manipulation is fair game. The point is that... He's not intangible. It wouldn't make sense for him to be intangible given that the Toki Blast in question, unless a new guidebook statement comes out confirming otherwise, uh, has no properties of affecting intangible objects because the only example of intangibility I think used for this is just Salder. And again, he never even calls himself intangible. Uh, again, Winged Warrior. Salder has managed to predict Ken's movements. Uh, makes me as light as a feather. Uh, pretty clear cut that the evidence supports the idea that Salder is not being intangible. He is just flying through the air to attack his opponent. Which, to be clear, is, is still an incredibly scary ability. If Salder can drop his weight down to a feather and can move freely through the air the same way a feather can and control it, that would be ins that's still incredibly insane. And it would also fall, fall more in line with Nanto Seiken's more absurd abilities, but that's just a personal opinion. So the point is that uh, I am claiming that this is wrong and that intangibility is not supported by anything but the visuals, but the context around the visuals does not support intangibility in the slightest. And with the new English translation from Viz Media, which is still an official translation, uh, provides consistent, a consistently, a more consistent answer in line with Salder's earlier statements about being a feather. Again, winged warrior. I believe. I believe the mobile game also has him stating in one of his victory quotes that he's like a feather in the wind. So the feather thing is consistent with Salder's motif. Uh, the point is that there's also no contradiction between these translations either. So there is no reason not to use, like, not to claim that this is valid. This should be considered 100% valid. It is officially licensed. It is an official translation. And there's no contradiction with a arguably better translation. So uh, that's all I want to talk about. Salvador's technique is non-tangibility. It's some form of weight manipulation. You can argue he still has levitation. However, if he's, a light, as, if he's as light as a feather, I don't know if you... I think he's just falling <laughs> gracefully. Um, he's probably got some form of levitation still, I think. I just don't think it's, I just don't think it's uh, intangibility. And I don't think any of the evidence supports it. Again, there could be a guidebook statement that corrects me if I'm wrong. But I have the most recent guidebook and I don't recall it stating Salder's technique with any sort of definitive description of what it actually does. It's kind of infuriating. Uh, but if anyone has any counter evidence, please feel free to let me know. I understand the visuals look very similar to intangibility, but I'm pretty sure even the movie fights also don't demonstrate it like that. But I'd have to recheck the movie stuff afterwards. But regardless, the official manga does not support that, nor does any of the mobile games. As far as I know, none of the guidebooks uh, support that. So yeah, uh, just a quick in conclusion, Salder's ultimate secret technique is not intangibility, it is some form of weight manipulation, and he should not have intangibility, and Kinshiro should not have intangibility interaction based off being able to hit this technique by Salder. 
because uh, I believe that's what gives them intangibility on VSB. I didn't check. But if that is, that should be removed. So with that said, thank you guys for your time as always. Have a nice day. I'll see you guys on the next streamer video. Take care, everybody.